Welcome to Education Beat. I'm Ann Vasquez, CEO of EdSource. We've all heard about the teacher shortage. It's not just in K through 12 classrooms. Preschools and childcare centers are also struggling to find teachers and assistants. One program in Los Angeles is helping fill that void by helping preschool parents become preschool teachers. As parents, we have a different perspective of how kids grow and what it takes sometimes to educate. Why should parents consider becoming preschool teachers? And how can they help as California expands preschool and transitional kindergarten? Here is this week's Education Beat with host Zadie Stabley. When Georgina Perez was a kid and people asked her what she wanted to be when she grew up, she always had the same answer. I want to be a kindergarten teacher. There was never even a second fail, you know, of, oh, you know, is there anything else you want to be? No, I want to be a teacher. And that was always the thing. Even back then, Georgina loved little kids. I've always liked just the fact that they have so much energy and they are so much fun. And I go back to always thinking about my kindergarten teacher and how much I feel like she influenced me, even though I was so little. There's so many things I remember about kindergarten, you know, coloring and painting and the way they were so soft spoken and so caring, genuinely caring and wanting me to learn. Uh, it, it was I loved it. I loved it. And I was like, that's what I want to grow up to be. I want to be like her. But things didn't work out that way. Georgina graduated from high school and started community college. And then I just, I saw the struggles my parents were going through financially. And I was like, I can't do this. So I ended up pulling myself out of school and just going to work full time. Then eventually I got pregnant with my daughter. And that was just, I needed to concentrate on getting her and myself ahead. So Georgina's plan to become a teacher moved to the back burner. Her oldest daughter was born 23 years ago. Georgina worked first at Disneyland, then a bank. Six years ago, Georgina got married, and she had a son, and soon after, another daughter. They're now four and five. When her son, Ezekiel, was three, she enrolled him in Head Start, and she loved it. The teachers were so welcoming and so sweet, and I loved the fact that it was a routine Um, But he was learning at the same time. It was just, you know, he knew that he came in and he was going to wash his hands and have breakfast. And it was it was just wonderful. He would come home and he would say, I have all of these songs and he would be singing them and all this artwork. And I was just like, wow, my kid is learning and having fun. (laughs) Georgina fell in love with early education all over again. He's learning about plants and how the sun and photosynthesis and he actually comes home telling me oh this is photosynthesis and I'm like how do you know that word you know (laughs) but you know he's learning about how plants grow about recycling he thinks that's so important I love the fact that he loves the planet so much um and just you know he does learn his abcs and his one two threes and just songs that I had never heard of before and he's coming home singing them and he knows them from beginning to end (laughs) and I'm like teach me that song I love it you know and it's it's great it's great she also enrolled her little one Valentina in early head start which is for infants and toddlers and then one day Valentina's teacher asked Georgina if she'd heard about a new program for parents to take early childhood education classes and eventually be able to work as teachers in programs like this one She goes, I know you're always telling me that you wanted to be a teacher. She's like, just giving you a heads up. And then Ezekiel's teacher did the same thing. She turns around. She's like, hey, have you heard about this? You know, she even had flyers printed up that she gave to us. And I was like, "Okay, I really this is a sign. I've got to do this. (laughs) I told my husband, I want to do this. I want to do this. And he's like, go for it. You know, he's like, this is your passion. This is always something you've wanted to do. He's like, and you're being given that chance. He's like, do it. So Georgina applied. When they called me, I was like practically like jumping up and down. It was taking everything in me not to not to go crazy with them. But I was so excited. I was I, I don't know how many times I kept telling him, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I was just really excited. <laughs> Thank you.
This is Education Beat, getting to the heart of California schools. I'm Zadie Stavely. This week, parents become preschool teachers. Georgina is one of 99 parents who just finished the first year of the Universal Pre-Kindergarten Career Development Initiative. It's a new program that helps low-income parents who have kids in Head Start to complete the classes that are required to take on various preschool teaching positions, ranging from assistants to lead teachers. The program is a partnership between Los Angeles County Office of Education and several colleges, including UCLA, along with some local nonprofit organizations and school districts. Our Los Angeles-based journalism resident, Malika Shashadri, wrote about this for EdSource. Hi, Malika. Hi. So, Malika, I know this is the first year that this program is in L.A., but there are other programs like this that also prepare Head Start parents to work in preschools. I know there's one here in the Bay Area. Um, Why is it particularly important to have parents become preschool teachers? Yeah, I mean, I think as I was chatting with folks, a number of answers sort of cropped up to this. Um, The first was just that kind of on a practical front that parents understand little kids and how they work, having raised them and working with them every single day. Um, One of the moms that I spoke with said that she's able to sort of use some of the techniques that she's used with her son in the classroom with some of the kids and that equally it's flipped the other way where there have been techniques she's learned in her teacher training that she's now able to use with her child at home. So I've, you know, I've definitely heard that end just from a practical stance of just skill sets that are kind of applicable across the board, both at home and in the classroom. And the other thing that I heard kind of often was just the fact that parents tend to care a lot about little kids and just know how to connect with them more. And that that in and of itself also creates more of a trust between parents and teachers where parents then feel like their their children's teachers are people who really do understand that age group, really understand not just how to teach a child content, but also just interact with a child on a daily basis. Right. And by definition, they're also like from the same cultures and languages um, that the kids are from since they're their parents. Yeah. And are some of them already already working? Yeah. 14 of them um, who wrapped up the, the coursework in the past week already have a job lined up. And some of them have even started in the classroom. One mom that I spoke with said that she started at St. Anne's Family Services. It's essentially a provider in Los Angeles that provides a number of services that that specifically are targeted toward families and young children. Okay, including preschool childcare. Yeah. So you went to this ceremony to see the parents who graduated from this program. Can you kind of describe what the tone was like and what what happened? What did you see? Yeah, it was really a celebratory event. It wasn't necessarily a formal graduation, but it was an opportunity for the 40 parents who went through this particular program to celebrate their accomplishments and reflect on what they learned and on their ability to now start teaching as assistants in a preschool classroom. Everyone was dressed up. There were a lot of balloons. Um, They had a special lunch catered. People were definitely taking advantage of like the photo ops. Um, So there was definitely that tenor of just celebration. But at the same time, I think it was also very emotional for people. Some of the parents only had to wrap up a couple credits in order to get to where they needed to be, and others had to complete a lot more coursework. And most came with family to support them. And, you know, really, I think a lot of them had also overcome really significant challenges to get to the point of being where they are now. When Georgina Perez started her classes in October, she said it was a little nerve wracking, especially since it had been more than 20 years since she'd been in school. But she soon realized most of her classmates hadn't been in school in a long time either. And she was excited to learn. We learned about just basic history Um, But we also learned how to do lesson plans, how kids learn through play, how the whole idea of just you have to do math, you have to do spelling, you have to do this, you have to do that. Drilling kids isn't really a way of learning. Um, And that was just it wasn't a new concept for me, but it was nice to know that it wasn't the best learning, you know, that kids actually are going to learn best through play, through interactions with other kids, through interactions with the environment. And just that alone was just, oh, enlightening, just to say the least. But soon after Georgina started classes, she found out she had colon cancer. 
And so when I found that out, I was like, oh, God, okay. So what am I going to do? Am I going to continue with school? In December, Georgina had to go in for surgery. It was supposed to be four days. But unfortunately, I ran into complications. So it kept me in the, in the hospital for about 22 days. At first, she thought she might have to quit the program. But her teachers worked with her. They gave her extensions on coursework. Georgina logged into classes on her phone from her hospital bed. My nurses were absolutely wonderful. Um, if I had to have blood work drawn, um, they would tell the, the CNAs, hey, wait, come back later, she's in class. And so <laughs> they, they, would, they would go right by my room, go and do their rounds, and then come back and get me um, and do my blood work when, they had to, when I was done. So she kept with the program. So, Malika, what kinds of positions can parents now be hired in? Like, how many credits do they have? And, you know, where can they work now? Yeah, it really depends, I think, on on the parent and on the cohort that they're in, in terms of how many credits they specifically had to complete in order to get to where they are now. And different cohorts are sort of designed with different, I guess, outcomes in mind. So some of them will take a parent to being able to be an assistant teacher. Some of them will take them to a place of being able to be a full lead teacher and be credentialed for that. The cohort that was celebrated on Wednesday, though, was specifically um, prepared to serve as an assistant teacher at a preschool. This program is helping prepare all of these new preschool assistant teachers and teachers at a time when California is struggling to fill not only preschool classrooms, but also transitional kindergarten classrooms. Transitional kindergarten, or TK, is an extra year of school before kindergarten. Before, it was just for kids who were about to turn five, who just missed the cutoff for kindergarten. But now it's expanding to serve more and more four-year-olds. And eventually, in 2025, it will be open to all four-year-olds. So essentially, a year of free preschool for all. But it's something of a struggle. 80% of school districts have reported not having the staffing. And according to one report, school districts will have to hire between 12,000 and 16,000 credentialed teachers before 2025 to fill TK classrooms. And every classroom also needs an aide. Malika, do you know if this program might help school districts that are scrambling to fill assistant positions in TK classrooms? Mm, I mean, I think this program is really geared more toward preschool education in general. So I don't, I don't think it necessarily translates into supporting TK in, in that same way. But I think, you know, people who are involved with the program are optimistic that, you know, just given the general widespread teacher shortages across the state, that this, you know, will make an impact and that um, the teachers who are trained through the program will be able to help support their communities and fill vacancies. Is there anything that kind of surprised you or that stood out to you while you were reporting? I was definitely struck by just like the number of people that, you know, went back and and participated in it. I think one thing too that I think one of the moms brought up is I think every single person in the room who was recognized on Wednesday was a woman. And so there were a few people who as well who were talking about, you know, the fact that obviously it's amazing that a lot of moms are kind of coming back, but that they would also like to see more dads kind of come in and take on those roles as well. Georgina says parents like her bring a unique perspective. Of how kids grow and what it takes sometimes to educate. We go through the tantrums. I'm not saying the teachers don't because, oh, I know they do. But you see it in a different light. She says the program also taught her how to be a better parent. I learned that, you know, my kid could be outside and I could teach him or her about colors, uh, looking at a plant, looking at a tree, looking at a flower, even looking at the, you know, the jungle gym. Hey, how many stairs do you see there? Let's count them as we're climbing up there. You know, just making it fun. That's a whole different perspective for me. It's great because my kids are learning. I'm teaching them something different and they're having fun. (laughs) She now has 12 early childhood education units. That means she's qualified to work as an associate teacher in programs like Head Start or a teacher in many other private preschools. She plans to do that. But she also hopes to continue taking classes. 
so that I can get my AA and eventually my bachelor's, which is my my goal. My end goal is to try and get my bachelor's. See, Georgina still hopes to eventually become a kindergarten teacher. I am still so elated. I love it. I am so excited. I see this as just like a stepping stone to further my goals of becoming a teacher, you know, full time and meeting my dream, you know, of of being a kindergarten teacher and having a classroom full of kids. I don't care if they're screaming. I love it. I want to do this. This is something that just I could say I finally met my goal. And that was that was my dream. And so I'm excited about it. And just having this ceremony was just so touching. And so it felt like it's a reward. It's like I I did this. I, I went through I, you know, all the sacrifices all the time, all everything. It's worth it. It's so worth it. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Education Beat, Getting to the Heart of California Schools, a production of EdSource. You can find Malika's story at edsource.org. Our producer is Kobe McDonald. Special thanks to our guests, Georgina Perez and Malika Sheshadri. Our CEO is Ann Vasquez. Our theme music is from Blue Dot Sessions. This episode was brought to you by the Heising Simons Foundation. I'm Zadie Stavely. Join us next week and subscribe so you won't miss an episode.